Game Brewing Genomics at Semisyn Bio. So uh, uh, we heard a bit about storing uh, uh, information in DNA, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how to do that uh, uh, faster and cheaper and more accurately, and some of the applications. Um, what uh, one of the approaches of uh, how to synthesize DNA uh, is uh, using techniques based in water. And uh, this is a technique that we're uh, approaching using uh, uh, lasers to pick out the uh, accurate pieces uh, in air, which gives us uh, substantial uh, improvement in, uh, in, in quality and accuracy. And why would you want to uh, print things in DNA um, beyond just memory storage? And uh, I'll, I'll mention a couple of the applications in biology where the accuracy of the DNA is rather important, but uh, by the code of biology is, is coded in DNA, and essentially it's, DNA is the software for biology and runs most living things. Uh, that uh, living things are uh, as found in nature and then as, as selectively bred by humans uh, can um, uh, are programmable themselves, but from these living things you can create products that uh, uh, traditionally have been made from either selectively bred or natural uh, biological products. But as you can reprogram these uh, uh, life forms with, by changing the DNA, you can improve the uh, yield of, of the kinds of products that would be made from biology. The code of DNA um, is very similar to the code you're familiar with in, uh, in computers, where uh, in, in computers you use ones and zeros, usually programmed in an abstract high-level language that operates in a computer. In biology, the <coughs> computer equivalent is, is a cell, and the code is, is a four-base code uh, coded in, um, in DNA that executes in the computer. So it's a, a familiar parallelism with a slightly different code. And abstract languages for programming in the DNA are being uh, developed. And when you get down to the microprocessor level, the ones and zeros execute in gates and transistors uh, inside the computer. In biology, um, the, the DNA is uh, executed biochemically. And so one of the problems with uh, DNA is, is it pretty much costs too much to make. It's uh, improving very rapidly at the cost to read it, but it's, uh, it's still uh, a little bit slow at the cost to write it. So in terms of read-write performance and cost performance and speed, um, the, this is an area that we're focused to address. So today you can... Um, uh, for a dollar, you can read about three million uh, uh, letters of DNA, um, and that's improving very rapidly, as mentioned before. But today, for a dollar, you can write accurately about one letter of DNA. So there's a big disparity there that our intention is to address this. So uh, at first pass is to do a, a thousand-fold improvement and then a million-fold improvement uh, very uh, quickly. The uh, cost of, of doing things in biology, like the cost to print the DNA for a protein is about $500. For a, a plasmid, which is an executable program, it's about $5,000. If you want to print the or uh, synthesize the entire uh, genome of a bacteria, uh, about a million base pairs is about uh, over a million dollars. Uh, the genome of a yeast is over $4 million, over 10 million base pairs. And the uh, genome of a human would be over $2, million, $2 billion if you wanted to uh, synthesize the entire, all the chromosomes of an entire human. So this is sort of cost prohibitive for experimental purposes where if you're trying to conduct experiments uh, where you design, for example, a protein, you uh, synthesize the DNA that makes the protein, you test your experiments, <coughs> and then you iterate on that process, the cycle time of, of this is uh, too long and, uh, and frustrating for, from a programming point of view uh, for biologists or engineers. And so there's 
newer, better CAD tools being developed for how do you design the uh, proteins or genes or genomes that you want, or gene circuits that you want to uh, build. Uh, and the uh, missing piece that we're addressing is, is really how do you um, synthesize them uh, accurately so that they will execute in biology. And for a gene that, uh, or a genome, uh, for example, Craig Bentner's uh, uh, genome of 1.1 million base pairs that booted up the original life um, had a single error in it, and that error uh, wasn't, the DNA was synthesized correctly, but um, the error was just a typo in what they said they wanted synthesized. And so just one error out of a million was enough to uh, have it not boot up as life. Um, and once they sequenced the wild type and, and found that what that error was and corrected it, it was able to boot. So the accuracy and the, and the precision of, of uh, the DNA is, is important when you're trying to program biology um, and then applications in biology. So for example, uh, 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 a protein or a molecule that is a cancer therapeutic or uh, more uh, uh, complex uh, genomes that, uh, for example, uh, uh, booting life, where you take a, uh, a synthetic genome um, and replace the genome in a, in a living cell as a computer, uh, such that you could maybe reprogram it to grow in other environments, or uh, in the area of optogenetics, where you uh, synthesize uh, proteins uh, from that are made by the DNA that are sensitive to light to, for example, trigger a neuron. And you can also add to other neurons different proteins that will emit light at uh, a, a different frequency. So you can do read, optical read-write of uh, uh, genes in uh, biological materials uh, with an optical interface. Uh, or, for example, uh, um, resurrecting uh, extinct organisms, which has been mentioned, um, where you have to read the organism, uh, write the uh, uh, DNA fresh from that, and transplant it. Um, so from a semiconductor point of view, well, how is this done? Uh, and the approach that we take is, is we use uh, an array to grow the DNA more or less like grass. Um, and each of the strands, single strand of DNA is grown, uh, um, programmed, uh, and each of the strands is unique on this array. We then uh, separate the strands from the array with little attachment pieces programmed on it. The, uh, these pieces of DNA are then attached to beads, um, and uh, the beads are one micron that we use and uh, have a single strand of DNA on each bead, and we put the DNA where we maybe have a million strands of DNA going into a billion beads, so it's a, a low <coughs> density of, uh, of uh, DNA per bead. Um, then we uh, clone um, the DNA on the beads so that there, it becomes two strand and many copies per bead. So the beads are something that we can use to manipulate with lasers. Um, and, uh, and we've made many copies of uh, dual-stranded DNA where each bead has its own uh, uh, pre-programmed sequence. We take these beads, uh, stick them onto glass, uh, flow cell. Um, the uh, uh, flow cell uh, uh, is image. You can't really see it here very well. We run it through a sequencing machine and get an image of which uh, uh, sequence of DNA is on which location on the flow cell. Um, and that sequence corresponds to a bead that has many copies of the, that strand. Uh, and we know um, with the quality score what the precision and accuracy of that is. So uh, we can be certain of some of those locations have 100% accurate DNA. And so in the process of making and cloning and uh, developing the DNA, there's errors and, and we can uh, tell those apart from good from bad. So it's more or less growing a farm and picking only the right fruit uh, as opposed to uh, the error uh, fruit. And so the longer pieces we make, uh, the more errors there are. 
then once we have the, uh, the beads with the accurate pieces of DNA located on uh, perhaps a billion locations on this piece of glass, uh, we use uh, uh, laser catapulting to pick off the accurate ones and leave the inaccurate ones behind. Uh, we collect those into flow cells and, and, um, uh, and then amplify them and, and, and assemble them. Um, so the, uh, uh, we uh, make a, um, a, a, a million set, uh, strands, print out uh, a billion, and then uh, select out the uh, strands uh, at, a, at about 100 per second. Um, so we can uh, produce uh, accurately at a high quality. It's hard to see on this projector, but uh, uh, some of these dots on the, on the flow cell are uh, uh, accurate uh, sequences, and we can uh, tell them apart which ones are essentially the good ones from the bad ones. We use the laser to pick them apart. Uh, this is more or less how the process actually looks and works, um, where the uh, laser is, is firing at a rapid pace and it's uh, hitting only the accurate uh, sequences. Um, and the, uh, so the uh, precision of the uh, one micron beads can be hit by the laser without damaging the DNA and uh, catapult it off of the glass into a collecting plate. From there, assembly is done. Um, so basically, you can print DNA without errors, assemble it uh, to construct new forms or historical forms of life, or reprogram things that uh, um, uh, perform specific functions. So uh, uh, basically, it's a DNA printer. Uh, that's uh, time. Cambrian Genomics Inc. is building a DNA laser printing fab in San Francisco, California. More information at cambriangenomics.com.